Welcome to Startup to Storefront, presented by Aura Bora. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're back with Lauren. Thanks for joining from Sweet Lauren. You don't know this, but our episode that we did together yes. was the most audio downloaded episode for that year. What? You have a crazy amount of fans, a crazy amount of fans. So oh kudos to you. That is so great to hear because that was a couple years ago. Oh, it was ago. a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And so. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. And Where's the on. business today? For people who don't, we'll give people a quick window if they're first tuning in to you. Sure. So Sweet Lauren's is a better for you baking and snacking company. We're all about really strict, clean, better for you ingredients, all about delicious taste. So like really picky about the highest quality, best quality chocolate and ingredients. And then we're also allergen free. So, you know, whether you're just looking for clean ingredients or you're actually trying to stay away from dairy or gluten or eggs or soy or nuts, you know, we've got you covered. So we're free of the top allergens just in case you or someone in your family or your friends eats that way. It just affects everyone. So and it's delicious. I can attest to that. Delicious. What's been going on in 2024? You have some new products here. Are these new products, these things you're launching? So we have launched, um, we did this last year too, but we just launched our seasonal cookie dough. So I brought you some pumpkin spice, which is like everyone's favorite. This is addictive. It's so good. And it's only here for a limited time. So, okay. you know, there's there's only so many out there. So I brought you some of that. And then there's a gingerbread that launches and a chocolate mint. So that's our seasonal cookie dough. We also have like chocolate chunk and fudgy brownie and salted caramel chocolate and kind of our everyday skews. And then what's really exciting is like we've been a cookie dough brand. So Sweet Lawrence is the number one natural cookie dough brand in the U.S. So we're sold in over 25,000 supermarkets Jeez. in a refrigerated cookie dough section. So that, you know, Whole Foods, Target, Ralph's. That's some real Stop penetration. And Shop, That's Wegmans. crazy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, we're so you're all, well on your way. Yeah. We're, we're in all like the major supermarkets pretty much. And we've been doing cookie dough for the last almost decade. And this year, just about four months ago, we launched puff pastry, pizza dough, and um, soon a pie crust for the holiday time. And so it's really exciting to be able to move into other refrigerated dough items that are really just like, basically it's all done for you. So you just take it out of that box, unroll it. It comes in parchment paper. So it's just like really easy to work with. And then puff pastry, I mean, you can make pigs in a blanket, pop tarts, cheese and fig bites, like apple turnovers, kind of anything you want from savory to sweet. So that's become like the top selling item in Target, for instance. And where's like, the company today? So did you raise since we've last spoke? Where, what are you doing? Still bootstrapping? Totally. So, so um, smart. So, You're a hero to so many on this so, topic. No, we've really... We've really worked hard at it. So for the last seven years, again, we've been a cookie dough business for the last several years, which a lot of food brands, you know, I think once they get going, they just are like, cool, what else can we create? Sure, what other yeah. parts of the store can we be in? And all of a sudden they have 150 SKUs. And like, there's no way that all those SKUs are building the business the same way. Like there's probably still, you know, a 10th of those SKUs that are doing the bulk of the business. So to me, like, I just want to focus on cookie dough and build it as big and healthy as possible because we barely scratched the surface. I mean, we could still triple the size of our cookie dough business. So why dilute our brain and our marketing team? And, you know, creating a great product is hard. And like, we've been perfecting cookie dough for 10 years. So I feel very confident in it. I know what consumers want. We know what flavors people love. Let's just continue getting more flavors in all store shelves. Let's get our brand awareness up and get velocity growing. There's just so much more we can do versus starting all over again with a whole new product in a different part of the store. So because we've stayed focused on cookie dough, we've built a very profitable, healthy business. And it, and so we have no reason to raise. Yeah. And when it comes to these products, is it just more like you testing the market, working with your retailer partners to see what else you can expand into? Yeah, I mean, we really partner with each of the retailers. So like we're very open, like Target, for instance, has been an incredible partner. So like, you know, they'll come to us and say, you know, for instance, they're the ones who really told us about seasonal. Like they were like, you guys are doing so well in cookie dough, but pumpkin spice, everyone loves pumpkin spice and you could do a whole seasonal program. And it's really just the confidence we needed to hear from a retailer to say, you know, they're ready to give us end caps and really support us. And so worked on pumpkin spice and gingerbread and chocolate mint and these incredible seasonal flavors and then launched them last year. They did so incredibly well, not just in terms of like revenue, but just 
new buyers. Like all of a sudden we just were getting end caps in different displays in the supermarket and we were attracting all these new people that had never heard of Sweet Lawrence or, you know, we're in the cookie dough category. I think the cookie dough category is kind of like the candy aisle. Like a lot of people have forgotten about it. It just seems kind of like junk food and you don't really think about it until you have that like crazy craving and you go. Whereas everyone loves a warm cookie and they, I think not everyone knows that something like Sweet Lawrence, it's really delicious and really clean, exists. So when we get these end caps and just different displays, all of a sudden new people see us and they're like, oh my God, pumpkin spice cookie dough, what? And they look at the ingredient list, what? It's clean? Like, oh my God, it's gluten free on top of it? Like our you know, dairy free or whatever they're looking for and they'll try it. And I think once they taste the quality, yeah. then they're like, oh my God, I love this brand. It's great to keep on hand. It's great. You know, yeah. there's nothing better than a warm cookie. Absolutely right. I'm going to make these later today. Yes, you are. And then I'm going to go to Hollywood Bowl and eat them there, <laughs> which is going to be awesome. So you're also a full-time mom now to some extent, right? Yeah. Full-time entrepreneur, full-time mom to two. Yeah. As you think about raising, I, I love asking parents this question because it's like you have two babies. You have three and a half, one and a half year old. What is it like? What do you think about them becoming entrepreneurs? They see you making cookies. They see you in the cookie business. They probably think you're the coolest person <laughs> in the world. And they probably think you don't have a job. <laughs> so what has it been like for you transitioning mindset wise? Well, it's so funny because I could show you a video that when my daughter was two, Okay, like two, like that you think of this as like a little baby, but like they're not, they're absorbing everything. And at two years old, she grabbed my phone and my husband was filming. So thankfully he caught on camera. I'm holding her baby sister. So like I'm holding a you know, her little baby on my lap. The two-year-old grabs my phone, pretends to be on a call and says, hi, I'm calling the factory. This is Sweet Lawrence and we need more cookie dough. And then she just turns around to me I'm, I'm literally just holding the baby, being quiet right behind her. She turns around to me and says, be quiet. I'm on the phone. <laughs> and it just was so amazing That's because awesome. I was like, oh, my God, she is absorbing so much that I don't even realize. And so what's made me proud is that a lot of the time, you know, we have a nanny and a lot of the time both my husband and I work and we work a lot. You know, we say to her, you know, and we can't do drop off to school and pick up every day. And you know, and I, there, there are a lot of other moms and dads that are there every day. And, you know, I understand that she might feel like, hey, that's not fair. I want you guys here. Uh, but to explain to her, like, mommy, daddy, we've like some big meetings. You know, I have a big meeting. And if I don't have a meeting, I'm going to come pick you up. And if I do have a meeting, you know, Maria is going to come pick you up. But guess who's going to be waiting for you at home, you know, and then just talking to her about it and showing her that I have other responsibilities, but that I still really, you know, love her and I'm there for her. And, you know, I just really try to end the day at five. So by the time she's home from school, yeah. I don't have to check my phone. I'm like, I'm really can be on. And, you know, I, I was really inspired when I started Sweet Lawrence. Like I saw a lot of females that didn't, that weren't married or didn't have kids because they just wanted to be so successful in their careers. And I knew I would never be happy if I just had a successful business, but I didn't have like a happy home life. And so I've just really intentionally, you know, I had my first kid and then I hired a president shortly thereafter. And that president, Doug, has been an incredible partner to me. So I've been able to hand off a lot of, you know, he manages all people now and all, the day to day of the business so that I can focus on growth and the high level and the things that like are my superpowers. And that way it's not so overwhelming that I really have the energy to be mom too. And that to me has been such a balance of like, I'm exhausted, but I'm like never been happier. So she wasn't like swearing on the phone yeah. in, in, this, in this video. She wasn't. <laughs> no, but she was like controlling. And also yeah. she was like, be quiet. And I was like, do I talk to you like that? Like, where did you get that from? But, That's awesome. you know, so I have no idea what she's absorbing, but you know, we make pancakes a lot in the morning. She loves to learn how to cook. She thinks it's kind of like magical and fun. She loves to taste the batter. You know, she's, I think it's fun. As she gets older, I can't wait to like bring her to the factory and like show her more things and show her, you know, that she can do anything and that, and just hard work. I think that's the most important thing is just showing that if you find something you love, like you're ready, you're happy to do the hard work because I think that's what it comes down to. Like this is just a lot of hard work. As you think about like you're growing the business, you have a growing family, 25,000 stores is a lot. Yeah. And so what are the levers for growth now as you think about Sweet Lawrence? So we've done very little marketing because we've been a profitable business. I haven't raised a ton to like blow on a Super Bowl ad or something that I'm not sure how what the ROI is. So we have 
so much growth. We still have other retailers to get into. So like we're not in Walmart, you know, we're not in big box, you know, Costco and things like that. Um, Are they knocking on your door? We're not in all stores. We're, you know, we're in talks. We're yeah, in talks sure. until it's like, right. You know, we just, we got to focus on what's good for the business right now. And so there's still, so there's still distribution for sure to get. There's still more flavors of each of our cookie dough that could be in those 25,000 stores. So, you know, we have all of our seasonal flavors could be in all the stores. We still have, you know, we have a chocolate chunk that's our number one skew. And then we have a salted chocolate caramel. We have a less sugar chocolate, you know, so just getting all the different flavors that are incremental, you know, into the store shelves and then growing brand awareness, like just driving more trial, introducing the product to more people um, is going to just increase velocity. So. Like that's what we're focused on, kind of those three things, and um, we're excited because I, like we again, I think we've we feel like we have very clear proof of concept, and we love our fans, and we have raving fans, and they you really do, we really do, and get messages every day that people are like, you've changed how did you do my that? Life. Like the engagement you have is so bananas. How did you go about doing that? What you do you know, think people connect with? Well, I think they connect with the taste. I think they're like, this is such a great quality product, like. I really appreciate what it is because I think people know how hard it is to make cookie dough from scratch that's gluten-free, dairy-free, and like tastes amazing. And and it's packaged as, you know, portion controlled in 12 portions. So it's just really easy to make one or two at a time. And I think people really love that because you don't have to make 12 cookies at once or, you know. Sure. So I think people... Or do and eat them all like I do. <laughs> <laughs> people love the product. So I think that's it. I think people really love the story. You know, I created Sweet Lauren's because, you know, I survived cancer in my early 20s and it changed my life. And I really am very passionate about delicious food, but clean and less processed and no chemicals. And and then the fact that we're allergen free, I think for those people that appreciate that, it's life changing. Because if you are diabetic or dairy free or gluten free or your kid has a nut allergy, I mean, Imagine just shopping in a supermarket. There's very little for you that is like the best thing you've ever eaten and, you know, and healthy and delicious and all the things. And I think that from the beginning, I've always listened to the customer. It's about them. It's not about me anymore. You know, I create these recipes in my kitchen, but the second I started selling it, I was like, I'm trying to solve a problem out there. It's not really about me. And so we really listen to feedback and we really, and, and we're just this ever evolving, tweaking packaging, tweaking new recipes, you know, like we're always trying to improve. So, and we just try to keep engaging the consumer. We write back to everyone. We respond immediately. Like we love our fans and we're, we're trying to never disappoint them. Let's go into the future for a minute. So in a world where you sell this business, let's say in the next four years, what does your life look like? Like, What's like the thing that you would love to do? Like not complete the circle, but to some extent really put, is it supporting other female entrepreneurs? Is it, you know, just going back, leaning into being the best mom in the world? Is it a mix of both? Is it showing your daughters how to be like your associates at your firm? Like what, what do you, what does that look like for you? It's a great question. I'm like so heads down in the business. I know. It's like hard to like, oh my God, in four years, I have a perfect <laughs> plan. Cause like I don't, you know, I think I just want to continue building a business that I love and that I'm passionate about. And that I think is really making a difference in the world. Mm. That's why I have energy to keep doing this because it doesn't just feel like I'm selling a product. That's so honest. Yeah, It really feels like. It's authentic we, to It's you. authentic to me. And I feel like it's, you know, getting emails every day from people that are like, you've changed my life. I'm so grateful for this. What else can you create? I really feel like, oh my God, we've worked so hard to build this platform. Why would we just stop now? There's so many other things that we could change people's lives with. And, and I just get excited about being the underdog. You know, I think like for whatever reason that's in my DNA where, you know, I want to show that like the female owned company, the smaller brand, you know, outsmarted the bigger guys, like figured out how to really create an, an incredible product, solve a problem and kind of beat the system and like how the underdog can really win and how better for you can win and how food should go in this direction. And, you know, I think so to me, I just want to feel like we've reached our potential and that. I, like I saw the dream through and yes, I think it would be epic. It's my daughters are so young. Right. So like, it's like, can I wait 25 years, you know, for them to be 25 <laughs> years old and like come work for me, you know, but I love working. So like, I love building, I'm a builder. So like, I'm always going to have, you know, whether it's sweet Lawrence forever or something else, like I just, I need a creative outlet, sure. you know, and I love being a mom, but I'm not meant to be like only a mom, Yeah, you know, I, I gotcha. I'm not. Yeah. 
what's on deck for 2025 for the brand? So we have an incredible, I wish I could announce it here, but we have an incredible partnership Tease it. Yeah, we're perfect. launching. With a person, Kikido, a company? A company, okay. like one of the most iconic brands out there. <laughs> okay. And we're doing a huge give back with them for young female entrepreneurs to help support young females just to like learn business skills and entrepreneurial skills. Because I think females, like if you have that mother instinct where you just want to protect and you'll do anything to protect you could be the most incredible entrepreneur. And I just think there's a lot of, you know, dads and men that have that, but there's a lot of moms and women that have that. And I just think like that to me is like the winning recipe to growing a brand. And, you know, women can handle a lot of... When you say protect, protect what? Well, just to grow, if you care about, if you have that instinct that like you, you know how to take care of something and nurture it and protect it, and give it what it needs. And I think you have part of what it takes to to build a brand or a business, you know? And I don't know, I think sometimes people can look at women, you know, as like n- just nurturers or, you know, oh, like you, you just, you, you know, you can use those talents for like raising kids and being home. But if you have that itch to build a business, you can use those same skills to protect and grow, you know, a business. Like I think of Sweet Lawrence as like my third baby. That's really well said. Yeah. What? Thank you. How did you land on that? I don't know. It's just an instinct. Like it, it really is my first baby, right? Yeah, like it was, yeah. it was the first thing. And then, you know, men and women, I think sometimes just do things differently, you know? That's right. Yeah. And listen, not everyone's cut out to be an entrepreneur, but I do think that when I started my business, both my parents were entrepreneurs. So I definitely was raised seeing kind of non-traditional mm-hmm. lifestyles. And I saw it was very stressful. It wasn't like super easy for them, but I did see them be super passionate about what they did and feel like they were making a difference in the world and they loved creating their own schedules and things like that. But when I started my business, my mom passed away the year I started my business. My dad was not very helpful. Like, so I was just really alone. And none of my friends, I was 26 years old, like none of my friends were starting a business. I literally had no entrepreneurial like group and you feel crazy when you're starting a business when you're dreaming of something that <laughs> no so one true. else gets yeah. and like you see the vision and everyone still else feel is like crazy. Yeah. yeah you still feel yeah. we all we're we're totally crazy yeah. cuz we're believing in something that's very you know it's not real, it's not real yet <laughs> yeah. and the likelihood of it happening is slim uh-huh. and there's so much hustle it's going to have to take to get it across the finish line so like <laughs> it made me feel crazy and even when and I was in New York City and felt like I had a lot of connections and I went to USC for college. Like I, you know, educated and and I still felt like, wait a minute, like where do I go? What are the resources? So all this to say is that I'm really excited about this next collab that we're doing. It's going to launch in January. It's with such an iconic brand. And we're doing a really big give back for female entrepreneurs to really just open access, you know, because I think if we're just shown it a little bit more and modeled it and given a little bit more tools. I think like, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of cool stuff. I love that you said that, the, the protect thing. It's going to, it's going to stick with you for a while. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cause I, I think in what I do, I look at it like in some way we could say, you know, men, we're the provider yeah. we, or we want to provide. And yeah. so to me, it's like when I do these projects, I'm like providing an outlet to the community, yeah. but then it's theirs. And then it's my job to just continue providing it. But now like with their input. Yep. And so like their feedback. Yep. And just make sure I'm listening essentially. Yep. So it's like the thing the, the skill set changes from providing to listening. Totally. And then providing in a different way. Totally. Your take on it is like nurturing, protecting. Well, I and think then it's continue both. to nurture it. Because cool. like I I agree with you that with Sweet Lawrence, like I, I started it and then it really is everyone else's at this point. Like it's not about me and what favorite flavors I like. Like I'm really listening to consumers. Where, where's there a need in the market? What can I do to help make more people happy? What do people want to buy? What are they missing in their life? Like let me just keep listening and staying close to the customer. The world changes so fast. Different trends happen. Like how do I just stay on top of everything to make sure it's relevant? But I will say that like I feel like what's making me hopefully a really good mom are the same attributes that's made me be able to run a company, which is like, I'm, I'm emotional, but, um, cause I really care and I want it to be authentic. I know to connect with people and be empathetic. And then I know how, when I love something, I know how to protect it. I would do anything, you know, to protect my kids or the business. And like, I think to, yeah, it can be very empowering versus just like, 
oh, you're a nurturer. It's really or, smart. It's it's like it's actually a superpower. Totally, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. You should you should do a whole podcast on that topic alone, <laughs> or a book, or a panel, or something. I love that. That's pretty amazing. All right, twenty twenty five. So when when do you announce it? So. I think we'll announce it in January. Yeah, when it launches. Okay, January. Um, Good and to it know. will go January to June. So it's it'll be, you know, a cookie dough product. So it'll be on okay. shelf. So it'll be <laughs> iconic. I'm so excited for it. So that's exciting. We're also launching some other flavors of cookie dough that we've worked on. So again, everything we do now, you know, in the early days of Sweet Lawrence, I was just guessing and listening to customers like, what do you want next? And now it's like we actually have access to data and we can really test. And before we launch something, we can be like 99% sure it's going to be successful. So launching some new flavors that we're really excited about that we feel like will be really good and uh, and growing, growing distribution and, and marketing. I think this is like 2025 will be like the year that we really lean into marketing. I mean, I want to nice. grow a household brand yeah. name, Yeah, you know, so... Um, And it's hard when you don't have endless budget to just throw to marketing. So like, how do you continue to do that by, you know, engaging your fan base, helping them help spread the word for us, um, growing distribution, growing trial and, you know, penetration. And so we're going to figure it out. But yeah, next year it's, it's about, you know, getting Sweet Lawrence everywhere. Yeah, I love it. It's going to happen for you. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you. Lauren, thank you for coming on the pod, giving everyone an update. Thank you so much for having me and um, I hope to see you soon. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.